Getting ready for the day. Let's go do this. It is so exciting that soon we will return humans to the moon. We're hoping by 2025, but that might be a little bit optimistic. It's so crazy that we haven't been to the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972, the last lunar flight of the Apollo program. 50 years ago, 50. So you might remember my video with this guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave me the suggestion of heading to the USS Hornet Museum before I left town and I'm really, really glad that I took his advice. Hey everyone, I'm here at the USS Hornet Museum in Alameda, California. Whoa, there's some really amazing stuff inside. So let's go take a tour. I'm just imagining what it would be like to, uh, to live and sleep and work on the Hornet here. So this is me imagining a day in the life, a warning, it's kind of goofy. It's really fun walking through here. All right, well, I just started my day. I'm a sailor here on the Hornet. Of course, I took the top bunk. And uh, checking myself in the mirror, getting ready for the day. Let's go do this. First, I wake up and I immediately look for my friends. Looks like my, uh, my roommates are gone. Now it's time for the outfit of the day reveal. <laughs> Gonna get my outfit for the day. You know, gotta have that style. I think I'm gonna go with the bomber jacket and maybe a pair of aviators. And, uh... Hey, doggy. This is the doggy daycare, and as you can see, Rufus needs some friends. Oh, maybe I'll get some breakfast. Of course, an apple a day keeps the doctors away. We'll go in the, the ward room later. I'm actually an officer here on the ship. I know, right? And here we are at the wardroom pantry. The wardroom is kind of served restaurant style and I get to enjoy this amazing food that you see here and have it brought to me. Whereas other people might have to eat more cafeteria style, but because of my status, you know, I got it good here. Although I will say I have to pay for my meal, whereas the enlisted mess gets their food for free, but I don't know, at least we have china and like nice tablecloths. Let's, uh, let's go get started. We're actually not gonna go this way. I'm gonna stop in the wardrobe really quickly though. I don't know where all my friends are. They must be busy. Also, in case you didn't know, the wardroom pantry is operational 24 hours a day, and this helps accommodate sometimes our erratic mission schedules. This scale is amazing. This is a depiction of the first plane landing on a ship. Now, this happened January 18th, 1911 in San Francisco Bay. This exhibit was researched, designed, built, and painted by Richard Radagonda. He is a Hornet docent. He served aboard the USS Ticonderoga CVA-14 in the 50s working on the flight deck. 450 hours of volunteer time. Look at all them. Man, well, I guess all my friends are busy because <laughs> this place is looking pretty empty. So we're gonna go upstairs, see if we can find them. Oh wait, let's, uh, let's get some cigarettes before we start the day. This is the fog foam station. In the event of a major fire, protein-based foam was sprayed over the flames. The foam settled over the flames, forming a blanket and effectively suffocating them. Foam was used in place of water because as with grease fires, water can spread a fuel or oil fire. The racks held five gallon cans of foam concentrate. This is one of the many stations where foam was produced. Well, they have been gay. That's all I need to know. But ladies' head bathroom. Check it out.
And this area of the museum has artifacts from the Apollo splashdown. Take a look at this Apollo test capsule. This command module design was under construction before the plan to orbit the moon was chosen, so the first command modules were only designed for Earth's orbit and lacked docking capability and a pressurized crew transfer tunnel. These features were added to the next command module design, Block 2, which connected to the lunar excursion module. This would allow two astronauts to travel to the lunar surface and return to the command module, which would remain in lunar orbit. It's so crazy that this ship fished the first four men to walk on the moon out of the ocean. And you might be wondering why I'm tracing my steps here, but there are actually painted footprints on the floor where the astronauts had to walk to the lunar isolation vehicle. There were four of these mobile quarantine facilities built by NASA for astronauts returning from the moon. Imagine sitting in one of these things for 88 hours. The whole purpose was to prevent the unlikely spread of lunar contagions by isolating the astronauts from contact with other people, but wow. But those 88 hours were just to transfer to a more spacious quarantine facility. The astronauts, the equipment, and the lunar samples from the moon all had to quarantine for a period of 21 days. And this mobile quarantine facility you're looking at was actually used by the Apollo 11 astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins immediately after returning to Earth. They were joined by a physician and a technician while it was transported from the Hornet to Pearl Harbor, and then to Hickam Air Force Base, and then finally to Houston, Texas. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we can arrange something? <laughs> well, we're just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. And, And check it out. Here's our landing strip. Gosh, it's just remarkable here. Just the sound of the lapping of the flag, the beautiful city skyline there in the background. Man, I haven't been to San Francisco in about 10 years and I have a whole new appreciation for this area. Another fun fact, she was designed to carry 2,700 people. However, the most that she ever had aboard CB-12 here, 3,500 people with 360 of those being officers. It's so cool standing on this essentially runway where an airplane was first landed on a ship in January of 1911. Wow. What a long way that we have come since then. So tell me, where where did they land? The helicopter that picked up the astronauts uh, from the shuttle landed right here, right behind the number two elevator here. And on board at that time was uh, then President Richard Nixon, Secretary of State Kissinger, wow. um, Secretary of the Navy Forrestal, and they were right up in this area on the island here. Okay. And that's where they stood observing it. Wow. Which is the original seal. That is so cool. How were they transferred to the mobile quarantine unit? Well, the helicopter went down, number two elevator, down there, and the helicopter was moved closer to the uh, um, MQF, and then they just walked out. And you can still see on the hangar deck the footprints of uh, Neil Armstrong. Wow. So those are accurate, the little painted steps there? 
far as I know. <laughs> yeah, accurate enough. This is just a fun little tour that I put together, but if you are in the San Francisco area, I would definitely go check this place out. It was super cool and I'm just putting it together now. I was back there in January, but hope that you enjoyed it. It was just something fun for me to share with you all. And if you liked the video, please make sure to like, please make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space if you're not already, and I'll see you soon. Hey everyone, I'm here at the USS... <laughs>